Father, we thank you for the message you've given the church of your word and what we, the church, are to speak forth. And Father, we thank you. That, uh, Second Timothy 2, verse 9 says, The word of God is not bound. Father, we thank you for the illuminating power and, Father, the presence and the peace that God's word brings into our lives. As well, we fully ma ma manifest in our lives as we walk in the totality of the word. Jesus could say the Spirit of the Lord upon me. I just want to pray the Spirit of the Lord upon me and to not be defeated. Thank you for it. I quote a verse there in the Lord has never heard one. The Word of God is not bound. When you and I speak the Word of God, the message that God wants the church to hear, could I tell you yes, there's nothing that can stop the message of that word. Now, if you get into the veins, you'll read this and I read it. I.e., its ministry course and efficiency will not be hindered by the challenges what we will encounter. Paul encountered things. And if you read, there's a verse in there. See, once you start to step out and see things in God's Word, there's a man here comes along called Satan. Right? And 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 says, Satan hindered us. But listen, the Word of God's not about. Right? Satan will try and come against you to stop you going out with the message. The word of God's not found. But you know what's here? There's not anything here. If you read about Martha and Mary, and I was saying that from Luke 10, verse 38 to 42, you'll read another thing. I was saying earlier on there, I heard of this man, and all of a sudden, he got a word from another man one day. He says, what do you think's wrong with me? I can't see the breakthrough in the Christian life. And he's seen a vision of this man walking in circles. And another inner circle. And he says, you're walking in circles. So he went back. And all of a sudden he opened the scriptures and he's seen Martha and Mary. And he says, Mary has chosen that good part. Luke 10, verse 38 to 42. Which shall not be taken away. And I was saying earlier on there, you need, and I need to learn to listen, not walk in circles. But learn to wait in God at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's such a thing that people go to Bible college. And when I have been there, listen to us here. The best college you'd ever go to is St. Mary's College, at the feet of the Lord Jesus. And waiting on Him. And as you do this, that word for good there, Mary has chosen that good part, is a word called, I think it's Agathos. No, Agathos. There's two words, Agathos and Calvary, Agathos. And with that Agathos word, and you sit at the Lord's feet, you will hear a message from the Lord telling you what to do in all the situations. And could I tell you this? That part must be chosen. Mary has chosen a good part, which shall not be taken away from you. Right? And you ask here, if you read on up this chapter, you better have known the chapter. It says this here. Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Doesn't say he heard that word, he heard the Lord Jesus word. She heard the Lord Jesus word. And see, when you're in situations, you need to be hearing and waiting at the Lord Jesus' feet. And as you're watching, he will show you what to do in those situations, whatever it is you're coming against. And see, when the Lord Jesus Christ shows you these things to do, you start operating and working and doing them things. And you've moved into this, we are working. The plan out that the Lord Jesus has given you. I tell you this, that is spiritual warfare. You come against us. Joshua, chapter 6. Joshua was told to the people not to open their mouth, but to walk around the city. And once they come to a certain time, they shout. That was the strategy and the plan for to break down the people out of that village who were bound to the city. That was the strategy the Holy Spirit gave him. I'll tell you this, David was saying earlier on there, and uh, David and Chronicles came to everybody and asked all the leaders, it's a good idea, I think we'll bring the article to the government. Oh, that's a good idea. I haven't given you a script before it's out, but listen to us here. David went and done it, and a man called Yuzza put his hand to the earth and let it die. You know what it says in the scriptures there? David feared the Lord that day. I ask you a question, did he not fear the Lord before us? No. 
See, after that there, every decision that David made in his life, he always sat and asked the Lord. We will read the next chapter after that. I'm not sure, maybe, from 13 or 14. You read this here. David was told, and that he felt the Lord was telling him to do something. And he, no, and he turned and he says, Lord, should I go and do this? And the message came from the Lord, yes, go and do it. Should I go up to these people? Yes, you should. Then another situation come along, and the Lord says, another time, the same people, next thing David says again, Lord, should I go up the second time to them? The Lord says, no, don't go. But when you hear the rustling in the trees, the mulberry trees, you go up when I tell when you hear that and you go up. David just followed the plan exactly what the Lord told him, and he defeated the enemy and everything. Because he was using a strategy of spiritual warfare, of waiting on God to he give him the message to do. And speak. I was saying on Friday night, God's looking at us for intercessors, watch men and watch women. Now the key to this whole thing is. Oh, I'm a way to do this. No, the whole truth is learn to sit at Jesus' feet. Wait to hear the message what God wants you to do at that specific time in a certain specific way. And you speak up for it. But I tell you this, you'll see supernatural results. Because it's not you. It's God's attack. And that's the spiritual warfare that you need to do to come against the enemy. When you rise up in your own strength, you've set yourself where you'll get, you'll get defeated and right. I'm just, that's what I'm just touching on here this morning, just on that. Why don't we show you this wee thing? I'm showing you everything. Matthew 28. Now we know these things, some of them. Matthew 28, verse 18. This verse says, I'm just, Matthew 18, all authority, or all power, some of the says, all authority, power. This is, this is Jesus. The Jesus that took him nailed on the cross. They buried, and the third day he rose again. So this is him on the resurrection ground. He raised from the dead. And here he says, in red writing, all authority is given unto me. Listen, what do you mean? Even the authority of the Father has? Yes. God has delegated all authority to the Lord Jesus Christ. After he rose from the dead. You know, quoting the Lord Jesus Christ. After this from the dead, it's not Jesus anymore. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. What, what do we, the church, preach? We make a wee tithe on it. All authority in heaven and on earth is given now to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a perfect statement I said there. We hear this. If you go to Philippians 2, verse 8 and 9, I'll read this. But this is the message that we, the church, should be speaking. We want to see if we want to lift up the message that God has given the church. Ephesians chapter 2. Sorry, Philippians 2. Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians 2. I've never said Ephesians. Philippians 2. Verse 9 and 10. It said he had nine. Wherefore God has highly exalted him. God has lifted him up and highly exalted him. I'm not reading the rest of the chapter, but to you. For the message this morning, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. Okay, go back again. And given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and shall confess that he is Lord. Can I read the next few back? That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in heaven. So go back to Matthew 28. Just want to read this again. Matthew 28. Right. All power is given unto me, number one in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28, verse 18. Where's all authority given to the Lord Jesus Christ? In heaven. Do you mean to say, listen, the scripture says all authority is given to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. We'll go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore God has had exalted him, given him a name, which is above him. When God exalted him, he gave him a name. The church today, we call him the earth name, Jesus. God has given him a name that's above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus every knee will confess that he is Lord. Even this. Word for God is right? That at the name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Right? I don't know, I know people don't like to replace the word, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. We said, no, I want you to bow. Not for reason. That, right, word for God is said it's all and given him a name. And that at the name of Jesus, that the name of Jesus, right, every knee should bow of things. Not bound to the Lord Jesus. Read it there. That's just coming to my mind right now. Then you need to read the Bible. Listen, by the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow all things in heaven. <clears throat> and things on earth, and things on the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Everything bows to the name in heaven and earth and under the earth to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, yes, we got it. To glory of to God. To the glory of the God the Father. So everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth bows to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think the mindset we have got is every tongue will confess that he is Lord. But do you think heaven bows, earth bows, and under the earth bows to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's, that's who we gather to. This morning, no such a thing. Which is actually that. Right? And that every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. I'm just, I just showed this out this morning, just as Lord to the Lord. Now we have a, listen, now we have a risen Savior and a glorified Savior. But we've also this, we have a risen Lord. And we do this. After that, in Acts 2, chapter 1, he, he ascends. When you have an as a risen ascended Lord, you now have a descended Spirit of God or the Holy, Holy Spirit. What have you got? A risen ascended Lord, and now you've got an next one, a descended Holy Spirit. Well, if you see this portion of Scripture, I'm going to read here in Acts chapter 2. <laughs> I don't want to know what Acts chapter 2. Let me see. You read, but from Acts chapter 2, a wee bit and it says this here, Acts chapter 2, it's verse 16. I don't see that in there. Probably on my head. I don't know. Right. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. You read these four words. This is that. Sorry, three. But this is that. You read that. But this is that. I don't really remember that. Now, it's set aside. You go right there, man. No. Glasses, Gina. You know. No, this, uh, no, sorry, this is a uh, wait, she went up there. But see, out there, I remember years ago reading that as a young Christian. I read them four words. What this is that? You no, know, Peter was talking about people speaking in tongues and different things that happened here. This is that, okay. But what do you see this? What this says here. This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. So, Joel, this is a quotation from Joel. Hundreds of years beforehand, of a thing that's going to happen, now it's happened. An ascended Lord, risen Lord, and a descended Holy Spirit, or Spirit of God on the earth. Verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and, young, and your young men shall see visions. We're going down to verse 36. Uh, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and all my servants and all my handmaidens. Them word servants there is probably do us, or bond servants, bond maidens. All my bond maidens, and all my bond, do us, bond servants. Okay. Let me see this. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven and above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible notable day of the Lord shall come. And it shall come to pass 
that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel knew five to six hundred years ago by prophetic aid from the Holy Spirit that the that our, our person who's going to come here is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. On the days of Pentecost. Listen. Is Jesus went to the cross, he's resurrected, he's now Lord. Now, this is what they're seeing for heaven. Now, if you read this on the you've got there's a perfect lot of things in this, but what does that be about? What do you want? Right. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of knowledge, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as he yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and full knowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God has raised up, having listened the pains of death. The Lord Jesus Christ has listened the pains of death. If you read, you read this in Revelation, he was going into, he was going into hell and he stuck the devil of the keys of death and hell. That's what the Lord Jesus was doing there. Today. What's that mean about here? Right, him God has raised up from the dead. Right, right. him has delivered by the eternal counsel and for now he have taken and by wicked hands are crucified. 24, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden by them. It was not possible to bind Jesus. Right, what's this? For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw saw the Lord always before my face. Now, you know that's here in all honesty. For he is a merry hand that I should not be moved. Right? Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh to rest in hope. Because I will not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. The Lord Jesus never seen corruption. That's just quite a wee bit of length of reading. But I, want, I just want to read the word. And everybody interpret it whatever they think. What's this? Thou hast made, thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou hast made me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and is separate with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He, seeing this before he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Uh, flesh, flesh to see corruption. This, we hear this, we hear. this Jesus has God's raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. Therefore, being at the right hand, by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now you see it here. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou in my hand, and till I make thy foes thy footstool. We hear this we bit. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus. See the Jesus you took and one you put on the cross. God has done this to him. Him you have crucified is both the Lord of Christ. Now listen, you need the Holy Spirit to give you divine revelation to realize that Jesus and his earthly manhood came to do the Father's will. But see, in his resurrection, God has highly exalted him. And now, especially coming to Israel, Peter says, listen, men of Israel, therefore all the house of Israel know assured that God has made the same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Can I ask you a question? Who do we see today when we think of Jesus? Is that not Jesus Christ? I, mean, I know that sounds... You may think that's up, but what's really a mess? What's in the name? Everything. Everything's in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have been given the message to give to the world the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you, 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 we're coming to our more, you'll know these verses. Let me show you this. Go you to Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. Verse 8. Where we live, we live unto the Lord. 
It doesn't say Jesus there. The Holy Spirit knew who the Lord Jesus was in us. But where we live, we live unto the Lord. Where we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and the living. Do I read that verse again? For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord, both the dead and the living. So Jesus Christ now is Lord. What you see this? Does the church know this? <clears throat> Tell me, are we preaching that message of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, see for conversion. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And listen, I'm saying this online. No mention of repentance. I'll show you some scripture here. Now, I know this is maybe you're going to listen. Watch this. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verse 13. Whoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 9. If, the, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God is risen from the dead, they shall be saved. For if the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession be unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believe in him shall not be saved. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for all for the same Lord over all is rich unto all the whole of one. What is it? It is rich unto all that call upon the name of God. My mum got saved at maybe 78 years of age, and all her life she was taught and she got baptism and she was believed in her heart for all them years of 78 years from the age she got anthem baptized. She was born again by getting receiving them and buying baptism. And nearly broke my heart for nearly dead so many times before this. And I said, Mom, you, Ma, you need to call upon the Lord. Listen, it's my personal business. It's none of yours. You just out of here. But listen, my mom ended up, you just heard me saying this. Could I tell you this? People have heard a message and they believe the message that was taken to save them. I want to tell you this, the message the church has been given is whoever calls upon the name of the Lord to be saved. My mum went to the hospital, and we knew this. She fell out of the hospital and a thing went right through her hand. And she, before she got into the bed, she told me so a month or two later, I called upon the name of the Lord and the Lord saved me. I tell you, that's, that's the only message I told my mum. Someday in life, mum, you must call upon the name of the Lord. Now, listen, I don't know. I kept asking her one night in the home, and she never even said to me, I said, Mom, you must hear you need to get saved. You're nearly dead there again. But she turns and says, That's sort of. And I says, Of course, and drop it. I says, None of your business. And she hit me again with me. I said, I had her mother, I didn't have her. I said to her, I said, A couple of weeks ago, Mom, what do you mean? And she told me exactly that. I fell out of the bed. And I called her from the Lord. You know, it's here then. Uh, you don't understand. People have been given a message there, and I'm not saving them. And we don't care. And other people, listen to us here, that was the message. And did I tell you, yes, my mum left so big a testament to the brothers and sisters. And she was telling them, to you call from the Lord. And I said, something else. Whoever calls, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And listen. If you go to Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, listen, check all this out. Go to the book and see the thing. And let the Lord reveal to you that the brilliance. Check every night. Acts 10. You must hear, can you imagine today? You must hear, I'm speaking online, I'm maybe I'm speaking to people on Zoom, I'm speaking to people on here. Listen to what we'll say here. You make sure that you have genuinely saved. You make sure that you have a genuine conversion and you know in your heart that you have called upon the Lord. Acts 10, verse 48. You'll read this. Right? You'll read this. That after conversion, right, okay, Peter comes along here and he says this thing. I'll read just to verify this Peter. Right? Verse 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify. That is, that is he which has been ordained of God 
to the judge of the quick and the dead, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believe in him shall receive the mission of sins. Through his name. Now it's this way. He comes along. And what, what's this? He goes to Acts 10, Acts 11. Again, if you get a chance, read Acts 10. You went to Acts 11, and you read with Peter, who was formerly a Jew. Jews were not to touch or go near Gentiles. God gives him a vision. But what he has claimed, called, called no man common. He thought he was told the animals. What's this wee bit? That's fine, Acts 10. You come to this wee bit. Acts 11. Peter had to go and explain himself to the, what do you call the thing again? The people or the church, all the members and all. Why did you go and preach the Gentiles? He starts to explain the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost tell him to go. And he, to keep him so right, he brought five people along with him. Like other Jews. I think it's five or six. No, he says, you read this on down a wee bit and you read this. I said a wee thing there, he went to go. But not, not needing repentance. It was this, and the Spirit bade me go, verse 12, Acts 11. The Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting, go over these six brethren, six, accompany me. And we entered the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose name is Peter. Who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and thy house shall be saved? What's going to save the house? Words. Words. What's going to save the What's going to save the house and the papers and the paper? Cornelius. Words. Right. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell. Somebody maybe online, maybe later on, listen to this message, and then maybe not say it. As I speak, the Holy Ghost will fall. If you speak the message, the right message, the Holy Spirit answers to the message. And all the Holy Spirit needs is an open heart to receive the message. And listen, as I began to speak the Holy Ghost on us as the beginning, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift they done to us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I was withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. Then hath God also to the Gentiles Granted repentance unto life. God grants repentance when the gospel is preached. After you get saved, you can repent to God. The believer in Christ can repent of their own things wrong. But listen, you read that verse there. Acts 11, verse 18. John indeed, right under 18, 17, 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. God grants repentance to the sinner who calls upon the name of the Lord. Now, that's the message. But we're living in terrible days, but if you go to 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1 to 3. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1 to 3. Right. I'll read verse 2 For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy For I have espoused you to one husband And may pretend you as a chastened bride Right, verse 3 and 4 But I fear this by any means As a certain beguiled Eve Through his subtlety So your mind should be corrupted From the simplicity of the fruit in Christ Listen, the gospel message is a simple message. The gospel message of discipleship is simple. And the lesson, to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It's a simple message that God will show you. What says, if I could find this verse now, I fear as any man, as the servant began to leave through his soul, to show your minds and corrupt it from the specific friend, for if ye have, uh, cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you may be 
There's different gospels out there. Different spirit. A different message for the gospel. I'm not just saying to you this. We're not, we're not overcome with this. We're just trying to say, tell you. We show you this. Now we know these simple things move in our way. But listen to us here. If you go to Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, you read. Make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But if you go to Acts, and I'm going to show you these places in Acts. You'll read about this. Paul baptized them in the name of the Lord. Paul had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Acts 19, he says. Acts 19. Just before I go there, I'll show you one. I want to say another thing about Acts 19. Acts 8, verse 16. It seems to be a bit here in Italian, right now. For as yet he, he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they knew about it, they knew about the Lord Jesus. If you go a wee bit farther, you'll read this in Acts 19. Now again, take time out, and could I tell you this? This is where the church and we, the body of Christ, are maybe afraid to speak these days around. Lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. The message of the word for everything. Acts 19, verse uh, 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews actually took upon me to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. So here we go. Baptized in the name of the Lord. Taking authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now see if, see if you go to Acts 19 verse 5. You'll read about what? Again, Paul baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul had a revelation of the authority God had given to the Lord Jesus. And he had a revelation of that name. What's this? When he went to the gospel, he says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a message. It's so simple. Listen to this here. Look at this one. Make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is Paul's church. This is the early church church. And then, operating through the verse 13, Acts 19, verse 13. Evil spirits, they preached and called over them the name of the Lord Jesus. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Right? We hear this. These people were speaking... That name, the seven spirits come upon him. Listen to this here. If you go down that evil chapter, we be back. I want to show you this. Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. See, when you lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, you might think there's nobody listening here this morning. Or maybe online. See, when you lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, you're lifting up to the Word, a light. And can I tell you this, the Lord, can I tell you this, he's, he's, you're justifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning when you lift him up. And I know what you're going to need. You're going to need a holy boldness to do this. What is this feedback? I want you to listen to verse 17. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. If you go on down to verse 20, you'll read this. And so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. And see, today, I, years ago, I started and I looked this myself, personally, myself, it's Jesus and his Lord. And I don't see. Oh, I'm going to speak that. I'll keep that to myself. But I mean in the totality of what I'm showing you. I'm talking about here calling upon the Lord for salvation. Listen, getting baptized in the name of the Lord, going forth and taking authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you walk on as a disciple of the Lord. Go you to Acts 9, verse 1. Acts 9, verse 1. Acts 9, verse 1. All comes along here. Paul was commissioned by the church, the Jews. Go and put everyone who were disciples of the Lord in prison. Men or women. Persecuted. They didn't put everybody in prison. Everybody who, who got saved. 
that those who were to save us. Verse one, 9, verse 1. So, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went on to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if they found any of this way, what way? Children of the way, disciples of the Lord. You'll find that in scripture there, children of the way in four or five different places. Now, it's found in Acts 9, verse 2, but it's found in other places. Children of the way. So what is a disciple of the Lord? Children of the way. That's what church meant to be. Right? Now you read this right through and you're going, you, know, you read all these things, but I just want to show you one wee thing here. Just before I go for time, it's really gone here. When you start to see this scripture, if you go to Acts, Acts 28, Acts 28, verse 31. This man Paul comes along and he sees this revelation and he starts to walk in this revelation. But listen, the things happen in his life, persecution and stuff. He comes along here in Acts 28, verse 30, 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do? He preached the kingdom of God. And he preached all those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, he preached the kingdom and teaching those things which concern the Lord with all confidence. You see that word confidence there? That's probably a word called parousia. That's a holy boldness you and I need to be able to speak this message. Now that, that, that there is found 31 times in the New Testament. That's how Jesus spoke. He, he spoke with a word called parousia. And you and I, for years, I couldn't speak that message in, to, to, in its full totality as the Lord showed me. For I have no holy boldness. But all I'm just saying to you is, these men of God had a parousia, a, a holy boldness, to speak forth God's message. And the Lord was transformed all around. Now, I said earlier on there, you know what the Lord intended the disciples to do? I just want to show you some scripture. Um, Genesis 49. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from between his feet, unto Shadah come, and unto him. So Shadah was a man. And Shadah is a portrait of the portraying, portraying the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Be in this, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shadah, Genesis 49, verse 10. This is Jacob prophesying over his children. And I tell you this, I think if you look back, the bloodline was through Judah. Right? And you'll see that. But these be things again, unto him shall the God and the people be. And I quote these earlier on, I just want to show them. Psalm 50, verse 5. You know, this morning, can you imagine, that's what I started to see in my life. God wants me to gather Follow him. Here I come. Psalm 50, verse 5. Says, Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my saints together. God had only one thing for us to gather his saints unto the Lord. Right? I said this earlier on, but I want to put it again. Maybe I said this before I started the meeting. Matthew, Matthew 18. Matthew 18. So there we have call upon the Lord. There we have uh, disciple of the Lord, baptized in the name of the Lord, taking authority in the name of the Lord Jesus. And here we have the other to the Lord. Right? Now listen, Matthew 28, verse 18. So it's Matthew 18, verse 20. 18, verse 20. Right. For where two or three are gathered, gather my sins together. Okay, or two or three had sins of God. Together, that word there as means in unity. Same comfort. Where the two, where that, you know, I remember I told you around Ephesians 4, and it says the spirit of the unity, unity of the spirit. Ephesians 4, verse 5. When you get unity of the spirit, you get the presence of God, you get the peace of God. 
and you get the power of God. When you, when you get unity of the Spirit, and the whole secret in a Christian fellowship, and you've gone to the Lord or anywhere, is the unity of the Spirit. To hold the bond of the unity of the Spirit. But I tell you, yes, that allows the Lord Jesus to operate and come into your midst. You see, Matthew 2, 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now that does not say where two or three thousand meet together, or two or three hundred thousand meet together. Listen, for two or three are gathered. Gather my saints together unto me, unto the Lord Jesus Christ. There am I in the midst. And the word to get out together, and it says, it's like an orchestra playing in harmony. Everybody playing and doing and playing in harmony. And that's what the Lord Jesus will bring about if we follow his plan. Now, there's a wee verse that I just put it earlier on before the end of the meeting. It's First Timothy 6. I'm just going to say what this scripture says. Listen, there's only one person to gather to. And there's only there's only one potentate. But Jesus Christ. Acts 6. I can find this one. Right, first Timothy 6 for us. Verse 27. Verse 15. Read verse 14. That thou should keep his commandments without God and beauty to the appearing of our Lord Jesus, which is which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate. Listen to us here, which in his time he shall show. The Lord will show who is the only potentate for that. The Lord will show. You may know you may be following other people today, but I tell you that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one we're together to. That's the one we're to meet him. That's the one we're to call upon the name of the Lord. That's the one we're to baptize him. That's the one we take authority in the name of God. That's the one we must be better. He was the blessed and only potent day, the King of Kings and Lord of Glory. And I'm just telling you this morning, this here, there's people online and maybe switched off and later on and switched off already. I want to ask you, I'll ask you the question is that the format and the path that you and I are following? That's where, the, that's where the power is. That's where the peace is. And the no most are looking for. We're looking to follow the flow of everywhere else. Can you imagine this morning? You come in here and you and who, you know who just think who wants to meet with you this morning. Just you think who wants to meet with you. I remember one time years ago, my mom died. And we used at that time, right? Uh, I bet first time goes by. But for the say other thing, uh, this man rung me up. And uh, I wrote this wee thing, and I really, when you watch him say, I really love my mum. And uh, I showed him maybe everybody says, oh, spoiled her, I mean, but listen, she died. And I got down the next morning, and this is what I read. I have missed, I have lost my best friend. But listen, <clears throat> I want to tell you about a different one that's even better. And I started talking about Jesus Christ. I went out that day and I, gave, I got them printed. And I went out to them tracks. And I would give them out around Derry Keith. And, and all of a sudden, this morning, the phone rang in the house. I, my mobile rang. The next thing he says, Did you read that gospel track? And I says, Well, I the Holy Spirit read it. He says, You must hear it. The only reason why I'm living is because of that track this morning. What do you mean? I says, Can I come and see you? I says, Can you come? And he sat down in tears. He said, you know, I see, I wanted to kill myself last night. And I, I looked at that track. And I says, you meant to say the Lord Jesus Christ, if I believe him, he will come. And he will be my best friend. I said, he will be your best friend. And that person was going to leave his home, his family, to enter a Simon community. I went down one day and seen him there. I've never ever seen that person since. I don't have to see him. And I told him, you need to call from the name of the Lord. But I tell you, the Lord wants to be everything in your life. You may have lost everything at the man you think. But I tell you, you'll gain everything. You Lord Jesus. And I want to tell you, the tears are just flooding out. I've never seen them before. No, I mean, that's one year. One day I went to a wedding in Edinburgh. And uh, I cleaned the car out and had a, a, a separate estate. And the sisters, <coughs> I didn't want to go over in the bus, so I decided I'd drive over. To me, two sisters, two sister-in-laws, and my own wife, and I was in the car. And all of a sudden, 
At the end of the day, I went out that morning to read the Bible for I brought the Bible with me. And all of a sudden, as I was reading the car, I seen this pound. And I said, where would that come out? I checked the whole thing clean, the wee book for a pound on it. So I took the pound and put it in the pocket. And opened the Bible. We read this. 1 Jeremiah 5, verse 1. Run through the streets of Jerusalem and see if you can find one man who wants the truth. You ever read that? Jeremiah 5, verse 1. And the Holy Spirit witnessed to me, saying, you're going to meet a man today. And I want you to tell him the truth. Could I tell you this? The Lord wants us to speak the truth to our neighbours. The majority of us haven't got the truth. We've got, got a traditional teaching. And we pass that off. Now what's this wee bit here? Jeremiah 5, verse 1. I'm through the, through the streets. Now I'm not, talk, I'm not looking into this in a prophetic way talking about Israel. I'm just looking, talking the way the Lord talks to me. Run, run ye through the streets of Jerusalem and see him now and know and see in the broad places thereof you can find a man that will be in and, and, and seek the truth. My pardon. I'm sitting in the wedding. Oh, a posh hotel with us. Oh, we want to see the cover in this place. And a cup of coffee was 4 95 I bought a session on a cup of coffee and that sounded like 20 years ago. I was at a posh place. Mm-hmm. Next thing I go say, I says to Carl, I feel the Lord's telling me to go out here to see the man. So I was running out the streets and I looked up the street. Well, it says, not a son. No, no, I can see nobody. So I started walking. I walked, I walked, and I walked, and I walked, and I finally come to the conclusion. Well, how long, you man? There's a chair over there. I'm going to sit there. You bring the man to me. And I sat down, and all of a sudden, this man come to me. I don't want to drink that. And he sat down beside me. And I, and I, I told him the gospel, not my verse. And all of a sudden, he turned around and says, Will you give me 20 pence? I says, no. I wait a month, so I a pound. Found the pound, the one. Remember to find the pound. The tears just started bursting in his eyes. He turned to and says to me, could you give me a favor? You tell me that message again. You wait here, he told me before that. His wife had left him. His children had left him. Everybody had left him. And he was stuck in a wee place with one room and nobody from there. And the tears were just flying out his eyes. And I said, wait to tell you this, God, doesn't, God wants to come into your life. And God wants you to fellowship with him. And the way you'll do that is you'll be calling upon the Lord. And wait to tell you this, that man turned around and grabbed the head. I said, I have to go with Monday wedding here. No, please didn't. And I said, listen, go. I'm going. And by the way, you told me you have a bus to meet. And the bus will come Never met him again. But listen, that's what the Lord told me. You run through the whole streets and you'll find the man who want to hear the truth. And I take the pound out and I give him and that's the tears just flooded and he wanted to hear the message. No one would say something there. I have a pardon. I have a pardon. No more. Years ago I was in Turkey and I, I was down for two weeks in Turkey on holiday. That's 485 miles from Sinar to Turkey. That's what I dug in one night, three, three and seven and a half hours. And I don't know what speed I was doing anyway. Uh, but listen, I had quite a number in the car. Now, I literally fell out of the car. I was that tired. But listen to this here. Two, two nights into the, into the whole thing, two nights into the, my, my sister on me, to say, you better get home here with your mum. My mum's dying. And we've been waiting for the days. The, the, the doctor says, so no matter. My goals again, this is me. I says, well, I haven't heard from the Lord. And by the way, I says, I can't, I can't drive up that all that miles again. I never make it. I've been running all day. I'm tired. I couldn't make it. So we hear this. I know you I don't know how you stood on. And all of a sudden, I goes up that night and I looked at the Bible. I couldn't see anyone. went in bed and slept. prayed. went in bed and slept. But up the next morning, goes down the stairs. It's under this place with a hundred people in. And the manager of the said, well, what, what about Noah Ian? Well, it was with us, Ian and his wife, Jar and the two friends. Next thing, all of a sudden, what, what about uh, your mother? I says, I haven't heard yet from the Lord. It's in front of everybody. I haven't heard from the Lord. Listen, you just well going home if she's dying. And so I goes the other day, and the manager comes to what are you doing, Mr. I goes my own, gets the phone. I don't know how I said that. So I tell you. Oh, next thing I have to turn around and I says, hold on, I check you. 
And I goes and rings the sister, and the sister wasn't on the phone. I says, Jimmy, what's your mum? You better get home, we've waited all night, you're not going to make it. I says, Jimmy, I haven't heard from the Lord. I'm telling you, get home. I says, I haven't heard from the Lord. I was up the stairs from that, and the manager asked me, and he says, what about I said, I haven't for the Lord. I went up and I rang the bell. We heard, I read, I will take the sickness from the midst of thee. Exodus, I don't remember that. 23, 25 or so. I will take this. I will close my Bible box down the stairs. Well, Mr. Sprott, what you did say, we're, we're staying. We're staying to the full week. Ian, one year and get in the car. I'm going to ring the brother now. I was really saw listening. I used to ring the brother now. Jimmy said to me, you better, you better go. I said, you tell my mum I'll be home on Friday and I'll see her. Me and us. I goes down to Torquay, a week place called Lennox Kingdom. The next thing, all of a sudden, I rung my mum at 12 o'clock. And the, the, the home she's staying in, she says, What's uh, so I tell me this? How's my mum? Something dramatic has happened. What's the way? What's happened? At 10 o'clock, she wanted a cup of tea and she's standing eating two grounds of toast. I said, You tell her I'll see her on Friday. Listen, all I'm just saying to you is, when you hear from the Lord, but I didn't realize this. I spoke what I read through, uh, through ignorance, not knowing. And I went down and I stood on what God told me. And listen to this. I was driving home from Blackpool. Sorry for the money. I was driving home from Blackpool. The wrong was pretty long. So I decided to pull onto Blackpool for a week by the wrongs got wrong to get right up through from Torquay right up. For some reason, I seem to be you can drive down to see driving home after for his holidays hard work. I stopped in Blackpool and Karen and I was down the street. So I'll tell you, do I'm really lying and take things easy down here. And listen, I'm standing with a pair of shorts on me. A t shirt and a Mexican hat, it was that warm that thing. And I sits down, and this, this, I was reading this book, and this, this voice said to me, If somebody come over to you, will you tell them the gospel? I said, No, boy, I'll tell them the gospel. Next thing again, I read it again. If, but if somebody come, will you tell them the truth of the gospel? You know, I look so right. These two just left them, and I said that. And this man I just seen making a V for me, just a little bit of a V. He sat down and me. The next thing I said, how am I going to bring this conversation about? The next thing I, I said somebody, he says, you're not from here anywhere. Would you be living around Korean somewhere? I says, I used to go used to go in Korean. I said, what are you on? I had to retire because of rheumatoid arthritis. He's getting on his joints and all. I said, tell me, ask you a question. Have you ever tell anything such a thing as the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, do you ever think of calling upon him? To get saved, to know you're going to heaven. We hear him go say to you. He started chatting and chatting and talking on, and all of a sudden, he pulled the mask card out. And I didn't realize this. They had to come out of chapel. If you look up, you'll see a cross right, right up this. He says, and this, he says when, I th- when I think of God, his son not spend, and I quoted it. So when I think of God, his son sent his son. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden of God, he died to take away my sins. You see, you meant to say, you're saying exactly what that have passed for. I says, listen, please don't get offended. If you are lying and you go to church when I'll take you to you need a personal business of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to call upon the Lord. That man stood. I said, I have to go. He stood. He said, you two, stay, stay. I said, I can't go. I'm sorry, I can't stay. I go. No, my wife says to me, well, what happened to you today? See, when I was told you about the Edinburgh, well, you meet the man. I said, I met the man. We hear she turned around and says to me, what experience had you today? Probably you wouldn't believe it. But all I'm just saying to you is, to ask you a question, what message are we giving people? Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Listen, you don't get to try and work it out. You don't hear to plead them, but they're on the back. You give them the message, and you need the message. And the Lord will, be, the Lord will produce results, but I tell you, it's the same as the disciples are. And God wants you and I to go into a fellowship and experience the Lord Jesus Christ every day of our lives. Now I'm not telling you anything. The Lord bless you, and the Lord has blessed you. And I just want to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, may we, re- we repent not falling on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Father, we repent of not lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ or your church. And Father, we, re- we pray this morning, Lord, that the Lord Jesus Christ from this day forth will be magnified and uplifted where it's meant to be. And Father, may the church grow in the enjoyment of what the Lord Jesus is supposed to be everything for them. We thank you for this now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Sorry to been on there. <laughs>